please give a warm round of applause for Jim Fuse. So I just want to say good morning to everyone. I'm Jim Fuse. I'm a, as Jeff said, I'm a retired Marine Lieutenant Colonel. And we're actually right now, believe it or not, streaming on four platforms. We're on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And so we're showing you the power of technology and how right now we're, we're potentially reaching thousands of people with our message. And so don't feel nervous. Everyone is going to get a chance to get up here. I want to thank my friends at StreamYard for creating this technology that is allowing us to do this as simply as just having a laptop. We're actually using a phone as our secondary device, and we could actually have up to six people. So, Jeff, thanks for this great idea, and we'll see how it goes. You're quite welcome, Jim. Thank you. So the way that this is going to work is generally like any other networking uh, meeting. What you'll do is you'll get up, and you'll give your one-minute elevator pitch. Instead of actually uh, giving you a pitch at your uh, seat, uh, you will actually come up here so it can videotape you in the process itself. Again, this will be broadcast. It will be taped. It will be on YouTube forever, uh, however long uh, YouTube lasts. Uh, and you, you'll be out there in uh, the virtual world. Uh, you will not become a Kardashian overnight. I just want to warn you, okay? So please uh, don't expect that. But this should be good for your respective businesses and for networking and what have you. Uh, then what will happen is I will give a 20-minute talk on networking, and then we'll open it up at the end just for any comments, questions, any referrals that you might have, or anything else that might come to mind. So at this point, I would like to uh, perhaps uh, introduce our first guest, uh, none other than uh, Peter Gibson. If uh, Peter, would you please come up here, uh, tell us who you are and what you, uh, what problems you solve. Problems. There are problems in this world? Okay. Peter Gibson, Harry Norman Realtor, Team Isabel Gibson. And uh, our bottom line is actually we coach clients to the closing table. I'll give you an example. Stories always work. So there's a, a Japanese lady, and she came to me. I've known her for quite a while. She came to me with uh, two other Japanese friends, one who had a town home that she wanted to sell and another with a home that she wanted to sell. And none of them really spoke good English. So she became the translator. And yes, we really had to coach them through some interesting scenarios. In fact, this particular lady, the first lady, had a town home, and she unfortunately was a hoarder. So uh, we had to get a, a dumpster and pull that out. So the life of a realtor is pretty interesting, full of stories. Um, and then the other lady, uh, the lady that uh, needed to sell her ranch home, um, she had a cousin in California that came in and flew in and decided to help. And he had on his mind California prices. So he was wondering why the Atlanta home wouldn't, wouldn't be listed at a California price. We had to educate and coach him through a few things. So uh, Peter and Isabel Gibson, team Isabel Gibson, we've been doing this for 16 years, did 15 million in sales last year. And uh, we coach clients to the closing table. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, so you get the gist of the format. So next, please, would you please come up? Good morning. I'm Deborah Switz, and I'm the owner and founder of Good Friend Mortgage. We've been in business since 2004. And what we bring to the table are the problems that we solve. Where can you find a local lender? Someone that you can shake hands with, come into the office, chat with. Describe your story. What am I trying to accomplish? Where am I going? What type of home am I trying to purchase? Am I thinking about uh, commercial real estate? And am I thinking about investment real estate? Am I looking for a home for my daughter? Am I trying to buy up? Am I trying to buy down? That's where you come into Good Friend Mortgage. Good Friend Mortgage is there for the local hometown feel. And we offer our office to that. We sit down, we strategize with our clients. And then on top of that, we have over 30 different wholesale lenders that have can satisfy what everybody needs. So for instance, if I have a self-employed client that probably isn't showing how much they really make on their tax returns, not a problem. Deborah Switz with Good Friend Mortgage. Okay, so uh, people that are out there watching in cyberspace, uh, basically this is the gist of how most networking meetings work. Although the people generally stand at their respective seats and give their elevator pitches accordingly. 
So could we have a next guest, please? Put this on. Just hold it. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Hello, I'm Melissa Watkins, Outbox Communications, a public relations counselor, content writer, and uh, content manager. Um, say that you want to um, have somebody recognize your business in the news. I develop and discover different opportunities for your business to get in the news for free, per se, instead of sending advertising or um, advertisements to the publications. Um, I help people discover your business through creative ways. I help find the current trends, say Google trends, digital trends, things like that, and find creative ways to get your content, your company, and business in the news. Um, the way that people discover businesses and are attracted to business these days. You hear content is king. Um, you want to be a leader in a certain um, type of market and you want to be an educator to different things um, and different topics and attract people to your business. That's what I do. I attract people to your business through creative and different ways. I'm Melissa Watkins. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. As you saw there, uh, for, again, for the uh, online, basically give up, uh, get up and give your elevator pitch, who you want as a potential client, uh, client or referrals, but give a description of what your business is and what problems you solve accordingly. So at this time, next, please. And the other thing is, with regard to this, you generally time for anywhere from 45 seconds to one minute with regard to elevator pitch. In some groups, it might be two minutes if it's your first visit, and five minutes uh, if you've been there for many times, and they give you a five-minute slot to, speech, but for, to speak. But generally, that's the way it works. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Susan Smith Hopkins with Your Best Choice Insurance Services. What I do is help people find a health insurance plan that basically will meet all of their needs and their situation and their budget. So I can work with anyone, no matter what their situation. I can also help anyone, any age. Recently, I've helped a lady get from her group plan, which was not very satisfactory, to a personal plan. So now she feels like she is fully covered. So Susan Smith Hopkins, any age, any situation, and it is a special thing for me to find people their health insurance that will make sure that they have the lowest and out-of-pocket cost. So anyone, any age, and I also do Medicare supplements, uh, but Please, if you haven't reviewed your policy, do a policy review. Get with a professional, a health insurance specialist. Susan Hopkins, your best choice health insurance specialist. Thank you, Susan. Uh, next. But as you can see, uh, this is a pretty good format with regard to people actually being able to come up here and give their elevator pitches accordingly. Yeah, I think first we'd like to be ready. Yes, correct. The batter's box. The batter's box. The batter's box. <laughs> Good morning, folks. My name is Robert Tully, Robert M. Tully Real Estate. We are a consultative and transactional real estate practice uh, that's dedicated to serving you and your real estate pursuits uh, with o well over 1 million square feet of development, design, build, construction, buy, sell, lease, brokerage, and finance. We're exceptionally equipped to help you form and execute real estate decisions that deliver superior outcomes. Um, we generally like to work with small business people to help them acquire and manage their homes, their commercial space, and their investment needs. Once again, Robert M. Tully Real Estate, 404-319-9212. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> no, there's no reduce in the elevator. Okay. You have one minute and one minute only. Uh, so our next guest. Okay. 
Good morning. I'm Mara Lane, Senior Sales Director with Mary Kay Cosmetics, a company whose mission is to enrich the lives of others. I teach skin care and makeup artistry, and I also teach others how to have a successful business. Mary Kay has a complete line of skincare products for... <laughs> <laughs> They're telling me which to prep. Okay. Oh, okay. Ah, there you go. Okay. Mary Kay has a complete line of skincare products for men and women of, to meet the needs of every skin type. From age fighting products to a line that is completely derived from natural ingredients. Um, we also have spa products, fragrances for men and women, which, you know, this is great for because Valentine's Day is right around the corner. So I can help you have your perfect gift. So Mary Kay, a great referral for me is someone who's interested in a new look for the new year and also maybe needs help with a Valentine's Day gift. So remember, candy is dandy, but beauty is better. Mara Lane with Mary Kay. Thank you very much. Okay, and certainly uh, she comes in handy for both uh, men and women uh, with regard to what she has. And certainly if you're on camera, you need uh, Mary Kay Cosmetics or something similar in order to uh, really uh, show that you still have some youthful uh, energy in you. So uh, I'd like to introduce our next guest. Good morning, my name is Gail Battersby and I'm here with the YMCA, right where we're live streaming from, the Northeast YMCA and also the McCluskey East Cobb YMCA. Like Mara said, Skin Types for All, the Y has programs for all. So if you're looking for something for healthy living, if you're looking to get engaged in the community, we have many opportunities. If you are looking to gain leadership, we have board opportunities at our YMCA. If you're looking for a great place to give your dollars that make a huge impact, the Y is the place for you. Just so you're aware of the Y's promise to our community is to strengthen the community through youth development, healthy living, and social responsibility. So I invite each and every one of you out there to come on over. If you're a senior looking to get engaged and you wanna make new friends, the Y is a great place, very welcoming. I hope you all come over and join us. Again, Gail Battersby with the YMCA. Thank you. Uh, I'd just like to emphasize uh, the Y uh, really services of the local communities. It's absolutely incredible. And I can't thank them enough for the uh, use of this room for both this meeting and also for a rising Phoenix Toastmasters, which meets here on Saturday mornings at 10 o'clock. We've had tremendous response because of the fact that there's uh, consistency with regard to the meeting room and it's just a great venue here for all of our members. So next please. Thank you, Jeff. I'm hobbling around because I had knee surgery. Uh, John Watley with Personal System Services. We do small business computers and networks. We uh, We'll take anything from three computers up to 100 uh, or more, but our sweet spot's 10 to 20, which is where most small businesses are. Uh, very quickly, give you an example. I have a financial services company that got hacked because of the Intel security risk. So we had to live with them through their security audits and their broker dealer uh, investigation of what went on and uh, we successfully brought them through that event. John Watley, Personal System Services. Thank you. In case you uh, want to know, John was a former University of Florida football player. And thank God that he's not shaking too many hands because you walk away and your hand is uh, somewhat He's at the uh, center lineman uh, physique of uh, someone from many years ago. So, next please. Good morning, my fellow networkers. Early to bed, early to rise. Work real hard and advertise. That's our motto over here. It's so not even eight o'clock and we got a full room. My name is Dr. Mike Morabaldi. My degree is DC. DC means doctor of chiropractic and I practice chiropractic. Chiropractic is a safe and effective form of healthcare 
That has been scientifically proven to eliminate pain and many other unwanted health conditions. At our practice, we take care of people from cradle to the grave. I've taken care of children that are just born with torticollis or having colic, those kind of issues. Older patients in their 90s still are coming to see me. So we put more dip in your hip, more cut in your strut, and more glide in your stride. Right now, we're focusing on the opioid epidemic. That's our big issue. So we're trying to get people to come to us as the first means of remediation of pain rather than going to drugs and surgery. It's been proven that chiropractors reduce the need for opioids by up to 60 to 70 percent. Good lead for me are those people that are complaining of pain and need some kind of natural help. Dr. Mike Centennial Chiropractic. Thank you. Uh, always full of energy and also uh, clever sayings. Uh, he, he continues to surprise us uh, week in and week out. Uh, so next guest, please. Good morning. I'm Mary Winecoop with Cowell Banker Residential Brokerage. Thank you for Jim and Jeff for putting this together today. I always hate following Dr. Mike. He is so great. Um, anyway, I work in residential real estate and basically make the reality of home ownership happen for many, many people. It starts anywhere from we provide A to Z services, anywhere from what do you do to stage your home to get it ready? What do you do to price the home accordingly? And then use a consultative approach to help those clients work through the entire process, which as we know as realtors can be very cumbersome sometimes, but uh, to create that final realization of ownership or selling of the home. So my work with my husband, Tim, we're based out of North Atlanta. We're out of the Caldwell Banker Roswell office, but we do service a vast area in Atlanta. So appreciate any recommendations and I know you have choices. So we, uh, our tagline is experience, commitment and results. Thank you, Mary Winecoop. Hey, my name is uh, Jerry Abyog. I am a co-founder of a global AI driven performance marketing platform. And what we do for business is two things. Number one, we enable them to execute data-driven omni-channel campaigns. And number two, we help them monetize their customer data to find look-alike customers on Facebook. So if you're a company looking to drive both top or bottom line growth, reach out to me in the comments. We've been doing a lot of work with franchisees and um, service companies. So if you're looking to have... Uh, Artificial intelligence, a tech company, help you drive your business in this new tech in this new decade. Reach out to me. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. I'm Karen Vining. I own Vining Financial Services. We are a financial planning firm located in Marietta, Georgia. Um, I've been in business. Uh, inviting financial for over 20 some years and what we do is we service people to help them get ready for retirement and to live their lives and be able to do the things that they want to do it's a wonderful wonderful place for me to be because i talk to people all day long and just help them ask them questions making sure they're doing all the right things making sure they they know where they want to be even if you want to work through your retirement that's something else to look at uh, so good referrals for me, people that are concerned about their retirement, want to get started. Maybe you've worked for a company for the last 30 years, want to make sure you've saved enough money. Maybe you've unfortunately lost a spouse and you don't know what to do. I can help you. Um, possibly you're young and you get your first job and you want some help with what to do with your 401k. Those type of things are all available. Thank you so much. Good morning. I'm Jim Fuse and I'm the president of Fusion Marketing. I'm a digital marketing trainer, consultant, and speaker. And I, as you can see, do a lot with live video. I have a weekly show called the Tim and Jim Show where we go live on Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. What I do is I help small businesses find their tribe in the social media jungle. I take my over 20 years of experience as a Marine Corps Lieutenant Colonel and have brought that to bear into the marketing space. So if you're looking to be up and better than everyone else, why wouldn't you want to work with the best? Thank you. 
<laughs> okay, thank you, everyone. Again, a new concept, introducing people, and also with three. A little oh, technical dif difficulty here, but it'll uh, solve the issue. Okay, at this time, what we're going to do is uh, the, the plan, again, this is the first time that we've live streamed this. And for here on out, we're going to every uh, meeting, we will have a, a session that we will uh, teach people how to do different things that will hopefully grow their businesses. And I'm going to kick off today by talking about, it was going to be the seven steps, but now it's the eight steps of networking. Because when I was putting this together, I wanted to make sure I could give a, a 31,000 foot view of what is actually going on. So next, please. Uh, this is a little bit of me in marketing sales for over 40 years. I've worked with some of the largest companies in the world and traveled the world for many years with regard to this. And I've been actively networking now for uh, 10 years. So I have a pretty good gist of what is going on with networking. probably been to an excess of 500 networking meetings over the last 10 years. I was trying to this one gentleman in here, however, that I know has been to more networking meetings than I have. I don't want to name any names, but uh, there's still a lot of people here that have networked extensively and with some mistakes you've made. And I've made every mistake in the book, quite honestly, with regard to networking. And I want to share some of the things that I have with regard to that in this presentation. So first of all, Okay. First of all, the thing is with regard to networking, you need to decide to take the leap. A lot of people procrastinate. They won't do anything. They'll just sit at home and they think the business is going to come to them. I beg to differ, particularly here in the social media age. So many people think uh, inbound marketing this, inbound marketing that. It's getting out there and networking, creating relationships with individuals. The face-to-face -face meetings are really going to help you grow. And so you have to and make the leap. Next, please. Uh, Kogita, uh, the other thing is developing a mindset. You have to have a mindset for networking. It takes a lot of work, and particularly for those just starting out with networking, it's very, very difficult because a lot of people, they have corporate jobs and they let go. Next thing you know, they're forced to go out and networking, uh, and they're introverts in a lot of cases. So they have to develop a positive mindset, mental toughness. So a mindset of Kogito. Kagito ergo sum, I think therefore I am, and have that type of persona anytime that you're going out networking. Next, please. And then also, the, one of the main things you have to do before you even consider going out networking is uh, define your what. What do you stand for? And as you heard, the everyone in here can clearly articulate their what, who they are, and what they're looking for. And that should be elevate a pitch accordingly. And defining what you should write this down, and you should share with others, and think of, it and have them give you the feedback. So does it really resonate with them? This really who you are? Is this why people are going to gravitate towards you accordingly? Next, please. Uh, then defining what you have to know what you want with regard to networking, because of the fact that it can be a treadmill to nowhere. If you uh, blindly go to networking meetings and having to find you want, what do you want to get from that respective meeting? You're not going to get anything out of it. Who do you want to connect with? Uh, what? Who do you want to meet? Who are you going to try to help at a respective meeting? You need to define that prior to going to the meeting itself and do research as to who's going to be there so that it aligns with what your want is for that respective meeting. Next, please. And then also some of the things with regard to the want. You might want to get gigs if you're a 1099 employee, excuse me, individual. It might be trying to uh, network for a job. Uh, so that's the other thing. Next, please. But at the end of the day, the whole thing comes down to money. If you know how to successfully network, it will translate into connections and potential revenues for you to help grow your business. Next, please. The other thing is, and this is something that so many people don't have, 
of the goals and objectives. Again, this ties back into the WAD, but the goals and objectives is something that people do not clearly articulate. They don't have it written down. This is what I'm going to do with regard to networking this week, this month, this six month period, this year. And these are my goals, how many people I'm going to meet, uh, what I'm going to get out of it, what type of return on investment, because networking can be very expensive. People don't realize that. The opportunity cost, the cost of driving to and from the networking event, if the networking event includes lunch, you might have to pay 12, 15, uh, 12 to 15 dollars for lunch, or five dollars for an uh, admittance fee. So things add up. So you need to consider that as part of the overall equation and part of your goals and objectives. Am I willing to make those expenditures to reach my goals and objectives? Next, please. And then the other thing is, you need to get your house in order. What I mean by that is, some people go out and network. And we're all guilty of this. I'm, I'm like the cobbler's child in this respect, given my websites that have been hacked and I need to get uh, running once again. But basically, you have to have your house in order. What do you look like uh, on the uh, web? What do you look like with regard to business cards? And I went to a meeting the other day, and actually, the, the, the one of the fads out there, I consider it fad in some respects, are the digital business cards. They're good in some respects, and I had someone pull one out yesterday. But they're very cumbersome to use. And so make sure that you do have business cards that clearly reflect who you are, your brand, accordingly. Electronic business cards have a time and a place. However, when you're faced with a situation, you're just quickly meeting someone, you want to make sure that you can leave them with a business card so they have that. Okay, maybe it'll go in a pile. But most people now are entering those business cards. They're scanning them or they're taking photos of them and putting them in their iPhones or Androids. So it becomes a part of uh, them, and it's always with them. It might get in, in a pile on the desktop accordingly, but please have a business card because the fact is a lot of times when people get up and they give their elevator pitches, you don't hear them. You don't listen to them, and particularly people that are hearing impaired, such as myself. You don't know what they're talking about, uh, and to, if they don't have a business card, you can't get back in touch. So remember, have your house in order with regard to the business cards. The other thing is uh, there's a marketing concept called the four P's, product, place, price, or promotion. Have that all thought out and well rehearsed before you go to a networking meeting. So if someone asks you a question, then you can answer them accordingly with regard to what you actually represent in that particular area. Next, please. The other thing is uh, with regard to this, make sure that you articulate your points of differentiation. Uh, when you go to networking meetings, particularly the smaller ones, they might be three or four realtors. They might be three or four insurance people, uh, or rather uh, different occupations with three or four of those particular areas. So you need to sh clearly show what differentiates you from every other individual out there. And make that part of your overall uh, plan with regard to what you're doing. Next, please. Then be known. And so what you have to do is you have to set up a presence online because what will happen if you go to a networking meeting, they'll go back and they'll Google you or they'll look on LinkedIn. And what do you look like? And so many people out there, you'd be surprised. They might have uh, three or four LinkedIn profiles. So you don't know who's who. You don't know who to connect with. Is it uh, door A or door B or door C or door D or whatever it is? You don't know. And a lot of people tag people when they go to these meetings uh, and the fact is, if you have three or four LinkedIn profiles, who do you tag? Who's the right person? So it really harms you accordingly. So be known by having a very strong online presence, and particularly on LinkedIn in this day and age with regard to the, the <clears throat> business environment, and so that people can find you if they try to connect with you uh, after the meeting. Uh, the other thing is with is be known within your respective discipline as a thought leader. So really gravitate, you become the person that is the go-to person for your respective discipline. There's certain people in here that are definitely thought leaders within their discipline and should really take that and maximize it to the hilt in order to be extremely successful with what they're doing. Next, please. So stop building that social media footprint. I talked about LinkedIn. There's so many other channels that you can use. Remember the Pareto principle, though. You're going to get most of the results from minimal effort, the 20% of the effort that you put in to the respective channels. The other is all, uh, as far as I'm concerned, a lot of diminishing return to your activities. So you need to be careful with that. Find out where your target audience resides and position yourself accordingly within those respective uh, channels. Like right now, 
if you're appealing to uh, baby boomers, you're not going to be a TikTok. And you're not going to gravitate to uh, towards that. Although some of the social media pundits out there are saying it's the best thing since sliced bread. They're saying YouTube, this is the year of video. Video matters, but it's all part of an overall portfolio with regard to social media. So just be careful of that. Pick your poison and stay in that lane because of the fact that there are just so many areas that you can become involved in in this day and age, and a lot of them are superfluous or you get a diminishing rate of return on what you're doing. Next, please. Uh, have that plan. Write that down. This is what I'm going to do with regard to networking meetings. How many networking meetings I'm going to go to this week? Which ones make sense? Me and go out to, uh, to meet up, and you can find hundreds, if not thousands, of meetings uh, locally uh, and nationally with regard to you could potentially attend. So you need to find the ones that really make sense. Also, with regard to those meetings, find out who signed up for those meetings and who will probably be attending because there might be some people there uh, on the surface that might not look like a good meeting, but there might be some influencers, people that can connect you with other people. I mean, there's some people in here that are extremely well connected. So by going to a meeting such as this, you create some synergy and alignment with those people who can open doors for you accordingly, introduce you to others who might benefit your business. Next, please. Well, I talked about this earlier, you know, defining your audience. And the audience uh, really ties in to uh, what you're doing with regards to the meetings. And it's, this goes back to the focus. Uh, you can't go to all these meetings. There are just so many networking meetings out there. So you need to focus in on those that make sense for your respective business. You can go to some others from time to time, and they might be nurturing. Uh, they might be some camaraderie there with others. And I know I, I go to certain meetings because of the fact that uh, I know the people, I've known them for 10 years, and it's quite worthwhile to keep those friendships going and uh, supporting them in their respective endeavors. Next, please. Listen, find out things change to really listen to what's going on in the marketplace. And today, certainly what we're doing here is indicative of us listening, taking advantage of the trends of what's going on and trying this live streaming of this event to hopefully teach others what they should be doing in this age of uh, networking uh, where these opportunities exist. And so listen to what is going on in the environment and pivot accordingly. And with regard to networking activities, listen in on those uh, meetings that might have changed or more somewhat that a little bit different that might be state of the art with regard to connectivity and what people can do to expose others to their respective businesses. Next. Find that next wave with regard to these, as I just mentioned, and this is the next wave, what we're doing here today. I don't think as far as I know, and perhaps Jim can uh, tell us, but I don't think anyone else is doing this with regard to a, a local networking meeting, but hopefully this will become a model that others will try to emulate with regard to what they should be doing. But I think this will benefit uh, each and every one of you instantly with regard to getting your message out there to potentially thousands of people. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, but I think it's worthwhile to try these different things and catch the next wave. And the other thing is with regard to your networking and your business accordingly, find out what the next wave is with regard to your respective occupation and move forward. I know that I was, uh, Someone in here had actually uh, referred me to someone, and I went out and saw them. It was the next wave with regard to medical treatment, totally uh, blown away with regard to their capabilities. So you never know with regard to this, what you're going to uncover with regard to the meeting itself, who you're going to meet that will introduce you to someone is at the cusp of the uh, next wave with regard to technologies or other developments that could benefit your business or you could help benefit their businesses res respectively. Show up. Okay, and that's so important. And uh, show, I, I'm not that good on camera, so just uh, so I, I have my uh, just senior director, Jim Fuse, over here instructing me. So please bear with me. But show up. And, and it's not only showing up, you know, dress correctly, but also show up mentally and make sure you're in the mindset that it's, it, positivity flows from you. You can't be uh, there at a meeting and have all kinds of baggage. Uh, we, Jim and I had this conversation yesterday. When you go to a meeting, you have to be positive. You have to give off that positive energy, or otherwise uh, people will not gravitate towards you. So it's a critical part of showing up. And show up early and stay late because it's going to benefit you handsomely with regard to the networking uh, 
business. Very, very important. Next, please. And be seen. Uh, don't just sit in a corner, go out and greet people, interact with people, because it's going to be incumbent upon you to be seen. However, do not be, when you go to these uh, meetings, do not have a stack of business cards and all of a sudden just uh, flipping them like baseball cards when you're a young kid. You want to be very, very careful and judicious and strategic with the use of your business cards. Don't just interact, engage with the people. And you can't be all things to all people. So try to pick four or five people by doing the research before that that you want to connect with accordingly at those networking meetings. Next, please. And then be passionate. Show that passion. Dogged determination. In the uh, introduction I was given the other day, I could not uh, help but feel the passion. It radiated throughout the room with regard to what they're doing regarding uh, medical technology. Next, please. Be authentic. Uh, there's so much, particularly in this uh, internet digital age, is you would not believe the, the amount of uh, disingenuous behavior and people that are putting themselves out there as resident experts within uh, their disciplines that if you vet them, th there's no substance to them. So just be aware of that. Be authentic. If you're out there telling something uh, to someone with regard to your capabilities, don't embellish it to the hilt. Uh, make sure that it's substantive and that if they uh, vet you, that they're going to discover it's a real you. Next, please. Be authentic. Next, please, Peter. Uh, interact and engage. And one of the things I, why I want to stress this is right now in the digital age, there are two ways of networking. One is in real life, which I highly advocate because it's nothing like that human to human connectivity. The other thing is online. But interact and engage with people, whatever you do, either in real life or online. Next, please. But think before acting. This is critical. Even when you go to a face-to-face -face meeting, think what you're going to say before you open your mouth. Uh, and hopefully the four or five people that you've targeted, that you have a, a sense of who they are prior to the meeting, so you're not going to say something that is going to upset them accordingly. Like I wouldn't go to a meeting and uh, be talking uh, to John here uh, about one of his rivals uh, from when he went to the University of Florida and played football there. It probably upset him if I talked about Auburn University where my daughter went to school. Uh, so I'd be careful of that. Be cognizant of who you're talking to before you open your mouth. And this, not only in face-to-face uh, -face meetings, but also online. So we know of people out there that tweet away and they don't think about what their actions are really going to produce uh, uh, regarding what they said. So become active with LinkedIn comments. Uh, this is a way of networking. Uh, believe it or not, is if you uh, like a comment or share the respective posts of individuals, you're engaging with them. You're interacting. You're networking with these people. You're developing relationships that might come back uh, to help you. Uh, the other thing is with regard to this, if you see someone out there talking about a subject, you know their subject matter expert in that particular area, do what you can to actually share their respective message, what they're doing. Because of the fact that if you know these people, particularly for the luminaries, influential in the respective um, areas, you will develop relationships with them that will really come back in a lot of cases and provide you with uh, handsome dividends. So it's well worth it engaging with these people, coming accordingly uh, with regard to what they're doing. Next, please. And help others. I can't stress this enough. You go to these meetings uh, and also online itself, and it's all about the individual. What's in it for me uh, rather than what is in it for others? So try to help others as much as you can, as I alluded to just a minute ago, with regard to promoting their activities and be genuine about it because of the fact that they will see through that if you're just trying to promote yourself indirectly uh, through your activities and helping them. Next, follow up. And this is something that most people don't do. They do a really poor job of following up. And you'd be surprised to collect a stack of business cards if they go to a small uh, networking meeting or, or anywhere, and nothing becomes of them. They gather dust in so many cases on their uh, desktop. So what you want to do is you want to follow up if you go to a networking meeting with each and every individual. Hi, it was nice meeting you. Uh, like this scheduled coffee if you can. There's nothing like developing that relationship over a cup of coffee at Starbucks. So just think of that. Follow up is something most people do not do but the winners do and they succeed 
uh, tremendously because of it. Next, please. And then the last thing is nurture your network. Uh, people do not do a good job of this. So there are various uh, CRMs out there that can help you with this. One I use is Nimble. It's been very, very effective to managing uh, my network, but it helps you to nurture that relationship. As uh, author Porter Gale said, your network is your net worth. And it's really true in this day and age, particularly 1099 society and so many small businesses, because the network is going to lead to referrals for your respective business, and it's going to help you grow exponentially versus if you don't have that network. So nurture your network. Next, please. And remember, it's a marathon and not a sprint. These networking meetings take time. And if you walk into a networking meeting and try to uh, walk away that same day uh, with thinking that you're going to have all kinds of business, it just doesn't happen, except if there's an immediate need for your services. So it's a marathon, not a sprint. You need to think that way with regard to your networking activities. It takes time, energy, and money, in some cases, in order to succeed. Next. So again, I'd just like to leave you with the eight tips that I feel are very, very important. And a lot of these are basic tips with regard to how you should be conducting your business accordingly. Having that introspective look in yourself and developing that uh, plan, goals and objectives, the plan, and then just continue to work at it so that you become very successful in networking arena. arena. Any uh, questions? So hopefully this was helpful. Again, a uh, 31,000 foot look at what you should be doing uh, in the networking arena. But I think this will help you from the standpoint of giving a structure as to what you might be doing, uh, should be doing, I should say, in the future with regard to your networking activities. Okay, thank you. So uh, this is, again, an example of what we hope to be doing in the future. Uh, Jim will be speaking in two weeks, and he already has uh, his speech uh, lined up, and it's very, very good. I can tell you that. I've heard it a couple of times, and very good, but very informative. But we want to take this to the next level with regard to educating people, not only uh, getting together, sharing insights, sharing elevator pitches, but also learning from the networking uh, event that you go to. It's so important. And if you look at some of the structured groups, such as uh, BNI and the they do have educational uh, sessions, and we're trying to provide this as a resource to the local community that will hopefully, hopefully benefit all of you. So at this time, I'd just like to show our online audience what happens next. So at this time, we will go, generally what happens, you go around and ask for people with the comments, if they have any referrals, if they'd like to have a meeting of someone else uh, in the room. So without further ado, I'd like to start perhaps with uh, Jerry, just the impression of the meeting, and maybe uh, some people that you want to uh, connect with accordingly. I'm just getting used to this live stuff, so uh, bear with me. So, just trying to get my uh, or my company's uh, name, you know, out there. So uh, nothing comes to mind. But any of you guys know of any? I've done a lot of work with franchisors, franchisees that need help driving growth, um, have them reach out to me. Service companies, we're doing some work with finance companies as well. Analyzing their data, finding out the trends within their customer base and executing data-driven campaigns and then helping them with um, improving their ad spend on Facebook. Thanks. So I think this has really been an interesting experiment in the use of live video for doing networking and I thought Jeff did a great job. So some of the things and we'll probably talk after we get off camera here is people understanding right camera presence and where you are on a stage. Um, but you know also the audio is extremely important and so for those of you watching and Jeff uh, believe it or not we had like eight or nine people solid watching on LinkedIn this whole time from all over the world. Samantha Kelly one of the top digital marketers in the world I uh, was watching. She really enjoyed uh, getting to see you speak. Uh, she hopes maybe Jeff will come to Ireland at some point in time. And we had people from Africa. So this is really a powerful medium and a great way to get your message across. And so it just becomes a matter of understanding it. So for those of you that watched, whether you're watching live on replay, would love in the comments what you think we could do better next time because this is the first time 
we kind of did this, I'm going to say it was the last minute. We really didn't know what to expect. So thank you for watching. Uh, once again, I'm Karen Vining, and um, at, normally at this time, uh, what we like to do is, is give referrals and thank yous. Um, I'm right now going to say there's three people in this room I need to see. Debbie, you are one. Mara, you are another one. And Gail, you are another one. We haven't spoken in a really long time, even though we see each other every two weeks. So I want to put that out there. Uh, I also want to thank you, Jeff. This is really interesting. I've been sitting behind the uh, computer watching it online, so I'm looking forward to seeing it later. So for those of you out there listening, let us know how you like us. Thank you. Good morning, everybody, again. A uh, pleasure to see everybody this morning, and I think this is phenomenal. Uh, one of my business goals this year is to uh, step up my technology and interface on social media, et cetera. And Jeff, I know you're the guru, so thank you for putting this together again. And I'm like a sponge when it comes to this stuff. So uh, looking forward to meeting y'all uh, further, and thank you so much. Enjoy your weekend. All right, let me, let me start off by saying, uh, Jeff and Jim, thank you so much. Um, Jim, um, I know you're in the military, and uh, at our office, we allow anyone that's active duty to come in. We don't allow, we accept. We want them there, and free of charge. So if you have friends, please let them know about our place. Um, uh, Deborah, I, I was able to connect with you. I, I, you asked me to email something to you or Photoshop it or what? I don't do that. I just send it in the mail. So I'm glad you got it. And uh, I like to say what when he, you said differentiate your special gift. I'm so glad that God chose me to be a chiropractor. I get to lay my hands on people and help them get better. And that's really I'm, I'm so happy about that. I thank him every morning. And uh, the last thing was Kathy Knob. She's one of our networker people that comes in here and uh, she's an artist and she fills in for us. Um, we let her put up a bunch of her paintings on our wall like a gallery and she sold her first one and it was uh, quite pricey so we're, we're going to expand that and of anyone else that we know our, our artists we're going to have and then we're going to have a wine and cheese these are all invited we're going to try to get the wine and cheese people to donate that because they you know so that's our networking event that's coming up so thank you very much for uh being here today Again, John Watley, Personal System Services. Um, I told you before, we prefer businesses in the 10 to 20 computer range, but go all the way up to 100. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I wanted to expand a little bit on the business. What the, we generally get demand from those who've been hacked, and they're not happy with their current service provider. Um, and that's happened a lot, where the current service provider wasn't keeping their computers updated, wasn't keeping their vendor BIOS updated and other firmware. They weren't doing their job. And uh, that's what exposed you to a maximum exposure to hacking. Um, <clears throat> I work with North Georgia and uh, East Atlanta. In other words, I don't have Marietta and Roswell accounts, so it, it's a little more difficult for me to give referrals because the folks I work with generally don't work in this area. But we do serve the whole North Georgia and South Tennessee. John Watley, Personal System Services. Good morning, Gail Battersby with your YMCA. I would love just to do testimony on people in this room that have made an impact in my life. Face by Mary Kay. Thank you, Mara. <laughs> Except the wrinkles, those are my very own. Um, I'd like to thank Karen. When I was thinking about retiring, she was kind enough to meet with me to tell me what I needed to have in order. And Dr. Mike for keeping me healthy. Thank you, Dr. Mike. He has a passion of really trying to help people and stay well. Great referral to, for me right now. We're involved in the community. I'm looking for people that want to make a difference. If you have something out there that you see a gap in our community, and if you had a group of volunteers, we could make a difference, please go ahead and give me a call at the Y. Thanks. 
Mara Lane with Mary Kay Cosmetics. And I just want to thank Jeff and Jim too, because this has been fabulous. We're very excited about the future, our new wave. And um, I do feel like you can get a feel that we all love each other and we support each other. And I just want to thank Gail too with the wife. She's always introducing me some, to someone just by being in this building. And to uh, everyone here who has supported me in the business, because yes, the products are great. And we love to be able to support you with all of your needs and to see friends who haven't been here in a while. So yes, Peter, glad to get, good to see you back again. Okay, and who's next? Mara Lane with Mary Kay. Jeff and Jim, thank you. It's interesting, I had to take a call while everybody was talking about the event. And I just happened to get a, receive a call from a person that is a uh, human resource, global, global leadership person, and explained what they, we were doing. And they think it's a great idea. And they want to know how they can incorporate it into what they do. So you guys are on to something. Very, very, very good. Uh, one more time, Robert Tully. Uh, a, a lot of real estate people are concerned with the process. And um, I'm concerned with the process. But one of the things that distinguishes us from others is we really care about the asset and that you're buying good real estate and real estate that gives you options uh, with changes in life, uh, circumstances, be it your job, be it being aging in place whatsoever. So uh, what I want to impress upon you is that uh, we have proficiency in the essentials of the transactions. But we go further because we want you buying real estate that's going to perform and serve you, your family, and your business. Once again, Robert Tully Real Estate, 404-319-9212. Thank you. Well, this little experiment caught me off guard. I was very shocked to see that this was set up, but I appreciate um, Jeff and Jim. And uh, I have several people in here I'm going to meet with. I've already got a appointment with Peter on Monday and Mary and I are going to do a one-to-one -one very soon. Deborah, I'd like to have a one-to-one -one with you as well. And uh, again, thank you so much. I feel very welcome here. And uh, this is your business network. And uh, we actually would like to invite others. So if you're watching out there and you're in this area, please come and see us. And I will be here in two weeks as well. Susan Smith Hopkins, Your Best Choice Insurance Services. Hello, Melissa Watkins, Outbox Communications, Public Relations Council. Um, I work with companies um, fairly large, usually mid-range to um, major large corporations throughout the Southeast, Mid-Atlantic, and I'm usually on the road most of the time traveling, um, and I get companies earned media, um, and I write press releases, content, all kinds of things, and really it's to make you known throughout uh, the the news media, whether it be broadcast, um, uh, TV, radio, in the news, in the print, just to get you noticed by customers or businesses to further your goals and get a return on your investment. And I can't thank um, Jeff enough because this is just really cool. It's another way to further broadcast your message. So thanks, Melissa Watkins. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you for coming today. Thank you. <gasps> And uh, I'd like to take this opportunity. I'm Deborah Switz with Good Friend Mortgage, and I've been a member of the YBN for almost 10 years now. And it's been very organic to grow my company through the people of YBN. Jeff, for instance, um, you did a great presentation today about networking, but my mortgage lenders, uh, my uh, loan originators, we actually brought Jeff in to do a presentation and to teach them about networking because it's all about building relationships in our business. So I can't thank Jeff enough. You did a great day I'm bringing, presenting this today and presenting was fantastic. And yes, Karen, I want to meet with you also. But I just want to let people know that if you come to this meeting, there's people that will help you network. And that's the, that's the gem. Deborah Switz with Good Friend Mortgage. Thank you. I love it when you applaud before you even say anything. <laughs> so Peter Gibson, Team Isabel Gibson, Harry Norman Realtors, if you're still watching this, you should be watching it for two reasons. One is physical, because I do two things. I'm in the physical element of real estate, 
I'm also in the mental element of real estate, your mental real estate. So there's two reasons you should be watching this. One is to improve your physical element of networking so you can understand from this how to improve your ability to physically get out there and network. Second reason is your mental real estate. You should be looking at this as a training piece to understand from others how your mindset should be engaged. Uh, and certainly from what uh, Jeff was presenting, understand how to prepare yourself mentally to come out here physically. Peter Gibson, Harry Norman Realtor. Again, uh, thank you, everyone. A special thanks to uh, Jim for uh, helping me with this, and we look forward to continuing this uh, every two weeks. So if you're in the East Cobb, Ross, Marietta, a greater Atlanta area, please, as uh, will be limited, uh, thank you be this morning we're in Wexford, Ireland uh, with uh, Samantha Pudden. Oh, in Africa is so whether you're a local person or someone that is trying with regard to your market, national or international, we're here to serve you, to help you, to grow your responses. One thing I wanted to let everyone know for anyone who's trying to go out there and network for the first time, you probably have uh, three or four real estate uh, agents. That does not matter because people buy from those they know, like, and trust. And as a matter of fact, if you uh, give referrals, you'll generally give a two or three referrals for respective discipline because of the fact that, again, you never know if the personalities are gonna match with the prospective uh, client. So it's best if you feel that the people are capable, if they have a track record within the respective areas, that you refer two or three people so that the end client can make a determination as to whether or not they're a good fit for them uh, personality-wise. So at this time, I'd like to uh, conclude the meeting. Thank you for attending. This is kind of uh, indicative of what a lot of the uh, networking meetings are like for smaller uh, businesses. And we do have an incredible amount of talent in this room. A lot of people in here had worked for large corporations for 20 plus years. And now what they're out doing is they're entrepreneurs and sharing their expertise with the uh, general uh, area in both here locally and nationally or internationally. Thank you and have a great weekend.